In this sub-lesson, we are going to learn about fiber channel fabric initialization. The fabric initialization process has four steps. The first phase is the principal switch selection phase. In this phase, this phase guarantees the selection of a unique principal switch across the fabric. The next step is the domain ID distribution. This phase guarantees each switch in the fabric obtains a unique domain ID. FC ID allocation. This phase guarantees a unique FC ID assigned to each device attached to the corresponding switch in the fabric. Then we have the fabric reconfiguration. In the fabric reconfiguration phase, the resynchronization of all switches in the fabric happens so that to ensure they simultaneously restart a new principal switch selection phase. The domain ID assignment is a two-step process. In the first step, the principal switch is selected from the switches in the fabric. Second, the principal switch assigns the domain IDs to the other switches of the fabric. So the other switches in the fabric do not get or do not automatically assign unique domain ID for themselves. The unique domain ID is assigned or allocated by the principal switch in the fabric. The FCID address assignment to the devices is performed by the switch to which the domain ID is granted. The domains are configured on a per vSAN basis. So if you do not configure domain ID, the local switch assumes a random domain ID. For the principal switch selection, the lowest runtime priority is considered as the highest priority. The default value is 128. So if some, and the highest value is 254. The value 255 is accepted from other switches but cannot be locally configured. So the lowest the switch, WWN number, is given the higher priority. Or if you're configuring the priority, the lowest runtime priority is considered the highest priority. And that switch is selected as the principal switch. Now during the principal switch selection, there are certain phases that the devices go through. First is the ELP phase. When the link is initialized, the switches enter into the exchange link parameters phase, or the ELP phase. During this phase, information about the interfaces such as buffer-to-buffer -buffer credits or timers or uh, um, cost values are exchanged between the two switches using controller address. The controller address is fixed to 0 cross FFFFD. Then we have the exchange switch capabilities phase. In this phase, the switch enters in this phase when the neighboring fabric controller agrees on the routing protocol and recognizes the vendor ID of the switch. The Cisco Proprietary Exchange Peer Parameters, or EPP, is used to negotiate between the two Cisco MDS switches. Then we have the EFP phase, or the Exchange Fabric Parameters phase. In this phase, the principal switch is actually selected. Now let's talk about how the distribution happens. As mentioned before, the domain IDs uniquely identify switch in a vSAN. The domain IDs can be configured either using a preferred or a static method. The configured domain ID is either in preferred mode or static mode. The default domain ID is set to zero and is of type preferred. When the subordinate switch requests for domain ID after the principal switch selection, the principal switch assigns the requested domain ID if available. If the requested domain ID is not available, it assigns another available domain ID. Now there's a caveat to it. When you assign a static domain ID, you're requesting a particular domain ID to the, principal, to the principal switch. If the switch does not get the requested address, it will isolate itself from the fabric. And when you specify a preferred domain ID, you are requesting a particular domain ID from the principal switch. However, if the requested domain ID is unavailable, the switch will accept another domain ID from the principal switch. The valid range of assigned domain IDs in the list can be configured from 1 to 239. And you can also perform filtering of allowed domain ID list by specifying the range. Now there's another caveat to that. When the received domain ID is not within the allowed list, the requested domain ID becomes the runtime domain ID. And all interfaces of that vSAN are isolated. When the assigned and requested domain IDs are the same, the preferred and static options are not relevant. At that point, the assigned domain ID becomes the runtime domain ID. If the configured domain ID type is static, the assigned domain ID is discarded and all local interfaces are isolated. 
At that point, the local switch assigns itself the configured domain ID, which becomes the runtime domain ID. If the configured type is preferred, the local switch accepts the domain ID assigned by the principal switch, and the assigned domain ID becomes the runtime domain ID. Let's take another look at the FC ID. The FC ID assigned to every WWPN or the, the worldwide port name corresponding to an end port. The FC ID made up of switch domain ID, area, and the device ID. The domain ID is native to a single fiber channel switch. In an FC domain or a fiber channel domain, the forwarding decisions are made on domain ID found in the first eight bits of the FC ID. There are a bunch of reserved FC IDs for the management server, for the fabric controller, for the F port or the fabric login server, broadcast address, end port controller, multicast servers. There are a list of reserved FC IDs that come into play based on your topology and based on your design. Then we have the fabric reconfiguration. As mentioned before, during the fabric reconfiguration, resynchronization of all switches in the fabric happens so that they simultaneously restart to enter into new principal switch selection phase. A new principal switch selection can be triggered with a switch reboot or a build fabric frame or BF frame or a reconfigure fabric or RCF frame. A BF or the build fabric frame is non-disruptive, whereas an RCF frame is disruptive. On the other hand, an RCF frame can be initiated manually or automatically if a switch is isolated. Most of the fabric switches have this automatic option disabled. We'll now switch to light boarding to understand how the fabric login and the allocation of FCID works. We'll be learning about fabric login as well as port login or P loggy or F loggy. Now to understand the whole communication process between the client and the storage device, let's take an example of this topology. We have the, the disk here, or the storage system here, and we have the client here. And between these, we have a bunch of devices. Um, let's take, this is uh, fiber channel switch one, and this is fiber channel switch two, and they are connected to the devices, and there is a fiber channel link between them, which is represented using color green. Now, remember from our previous um, sub-lesson, this is the initiator. And this is the target. This is our end port. And this is our F port. Same here, N, and this is F. The ports between the two switches, or the fiber channel switches, or in this case, which is our MDS 9000, these ports are going to be E ports. Now, what happens is the client tries to, when, when both these devices connect to the fiber channel switch, they send an F loggy, which is the fabric login. So they perform the fabric login. In response to the fabric login, the fiber channel switch responds with an FCID. And it responds back here to with an FCID. Yeah, don't get confused with these two colors, but they mean that the response from the fiber channel switch is uh, with the FCID. Now at this point, both the fiber channel switches are maintaining what we call a F loggy database. Now at this point, 
these switches only have the information about the devices that are connected to themselves. They do not have the information exchanged yet. Once the FCID is assigned, the client will initialize or, or send a P loggy. So now I can use a different color. The client will send a P loggy. Now, P loggy is initiated by the client, but the communication happens between the worldwide port name on the client to the worldwide node name on the target. So the communication has to happen uh, between the client and the target, or the initiator and the target. Now, these guys do not have the information between them by default. What happens between them is the FCNS, the fiber channel naming service or the name service. The fiber channel name service ensures that the database or the f -loggy database between the fiber channel switches is exchanged. That's how both these switches get to know about the port names or the worldwide port names of both present on both these switches and they exchange with each other. So when the client tries to reach the remote worldwide port name, the switches will have information and detail on how to reach to that port name. Once this process is exchanged or the FCNS is enabled and, and the f -loggy database is exchanged, at that point, the process login is initiated between the client from this point towards the target. P-R-L-I, process login. The process login helps initiating the communication between the client and the target. These steps complete the fabric initialization process in a fiber channel based fabric between the initiator and the target. Now, once the PRLI is initiated, based on the configured LUN on or the logical unit number on the target and the permissions, the response is provided back to the client and client can then access the storage drives.